Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning around just after 4 a.m. in the morning. And uh, we just brought group one up into the holding area to the milk parlor. So they're getting milked right now. I'm scraping the group one here. So we're gonna use this Bobcat. We're first gonna check the oil in both of these bad boys because I wanna make sure they got a good amount of oil in there. Just gotta come back here. So you see right there, plenty of oil in there. So the old S130's got quite a bit of oil in there also. Maybe maybe a little bit too much almost, but it'll be good. So you guys can see we got the angle scraper there for scraping feed, but I haven't used that for a couple days because we'll walk over to the feed alley here and the Juno, we actually got it working the way we want it to. It's taking a bit of time, that's for sure, but uh, we figured it out, so. Nice coming into the barn in the morning and seeing that the feed is pushed up. It's taken me quite a bit of time to kind of figure that Juno out, but now that we did figure it out, it's going the way we want it to, pretty reliably again, and uh, I'm stoked about that. So if that thing ever breaks down, I'm gonna be a lot more kind of well-versed in figuring that thing out, and we won't have to make a bunch of expensive service calls because we know kind of how to work with it a lot better, so. Did take us a while to get it figured out, but we got it figured out now. Anyway, I'm gonna start scraping this group here. This thing just cranks smoke every time I start it in the morning. It's pretty cold. Try to stay a little bit off of the beds because otherwise it'll kind of flick a little bit of manure back in the beds. We don't want that. Just gonna put some organic material in the beds. That's gonna lead to some more bacteria in there, more mastitis in the herd. We don't want that. And it's also gonna make the cows a little bit dirtier and we want them looking nice and clean. So one other thing that I wanted to mention was these two bobcats are the only two pieces of equipment on the farm that we never let warm up properly before we go to work with them. So this thing, even with that cold start you guys saw there, I revved it right away to 75% throttle as soon as I hopped in there. And after a couple minutes, it was at 100. So we don't let these things warm up at all. We've had really good luck with that actually. That Bobcat has about 2000 hours on it and it was always started cold start, max RPM. And that 2000 hours is all increments of 20 minutes scraping. So. It started a lot of cold starts and just revved right up. So it's it's held on pretty good. Um, we'll see how this one holds up. It's been going for at least two years now. So pretty not so bad and um, still no issues with it. Hopefully it holds on for like another eight years. Maybe we get 10 years out of it. That'd be awesome. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but we'll see. Uh, would be nice. The reason why we don't let them warm up, we just want to hop in there in the morning, especially at 4 a.m. Just get in that bobcat, scrape the alleys. We don't want to have to wait for it to warm up. It's just something that's worked good for us, and my dad always did it in the old barn, so we just keep doing it. <laughs> Group here. I'm gonna show you guys how we clean the window on the Bobcat. Got the windscreen wiper going there. We'll come here by the vet room and we'll just spray it with water. There's definitely no easier way to keep the Bobcat window clean than this. You would think it would wear out the wiper blade pretty quickly doing that, but I've been doing that for two years now and the thing is still in mint condition and it doesn't streak at all, so I don't know, it's pretty pretty convincing to me. All right, we're all done milking cows for this morning. I'm just gonna clean this parlor off and then we'll see what else we have to do this morning.
sure does look like it's a nice day outside today. But uh, this afternoon, it's actually colder than it was this morning when I woke up at 3.30 to milk the cows. And that's because over the course of today, it just got colder. Uh, some cold air was blowing in, whatever, that's fine. But when me and Nalene came into the parlor this afternoon, all of the milkers were frozen to the wash trays and that is very bad. So we literally had to reef them off of the wash trays. They're just parked on like that. And uh, there was all ice in there. So we had to thaw them all out, we can't have that. So obviously something I need to tweak with the ventilation. The winter ventilation is just those inlets. They go all the way down to the end of the barn. And there's also some exhaust chimneys down the center of the barn. So. That's what I'm gonna have to play around with. That's our winter ventilation. Those chimneys will suck air out of the barn when it gets too warm. For example, when all of the cows are loaded into the holding area, it gets too warm in here, so it's gonna exhaust the air out of the barn. But when there's no cows in here over the middle of the day and over the middle of the night, um, that's when it's really gonna start to get cold. So those fans need to automatically shut off and these flaps need to shut all the way closed. Otherwise, the temperature is just gonna drop too far down in this barn. This barn has no heater at all, so there's no heaters, no natural gas furnaces or nothing like that. It's all run purely off of cow heat. And that's why we really need to be on top of managing how those flaps and the chimneys are working. So obviously these things aren't closing 100% of the way. I was always kind of worried if I do close them all the way, that cold air from outside is gonna mix with the more humid air inside the barn here. And it's gonna kind of condensate right where the flap opens up and freeze shut. But I don't really care if they're gonna freeze shut. I can always pull them open. I really don't want any lines to be freezing up in this barn. So I'm just gonna make it so they can close all the way and that should solve our problem. So we're right here at the ventilation and uh, this is the box I'm gonna need to work with. If I enter in here, it's probably gonna say uh, low temp probe. There we go. So these are probes throughout the barn. They measure the temperature and some alarms were tripped here saying it's just too cold in here. So uh, I'm gonna go to settings, I believe. And um, no, I think we gotta go to maintenance. Manual override, no, we gotta go. It's gotta be in settings. I always gotta think, kinda figure out how to work with this thing. It's super complicated, there's so many menus. I'm just gonna dive into this thing a little bit here, figure out what I gotta do, and we'll uh, get these settings figured out. I got the one now set, the west inlet to minimum position 0%. I'm gonna do that for the east inlets as well. And I'm just gonna kind of tweak where they're going to um, be at, you know, 0%, 50%, 100% to at the different temperatures. You can kind of set all of that kind of stuff in this ventilation controller here, which is pretty awesome. You just gotta kind of get it set where you want it to, and then uh, you can leave it alone for the rest of winter. So um, if I go here, we can see outside temperature minus 21.5 degrees Celsius. I don't know actually how accurate that is. It's probably pretty close. So that's how cold it is outside. That seems pretty cold. It's not actually that cold. We're gonna get way colder out here during winter. So if we're already seeing things freezing in the barn, we definitely gotta tweak some stuff before it actually gets that cold. Cause if we don't do anything, we're gonna have some major problems in our barns once it actually gets that cold. So should be good now. We got those settings figured out. Hopefully I don't have to worry about it. I'm just gonna check the water bowls in our straw packs here. I never have to worry about this barn freezing up. We got 320 cows in here right now. That's more than enough furnace than this barn is ever gonna need to stay warm. Cows give off an incredible amount of heat. So don't really have to worry about it in this barn. It's just this barn here where there's so few cows in here when we're not milking, just the two straw packs at the back. There's only ever, you know, maybe 25, 30 cows in here tops. We could put a few more cows in here. We just don't really like doing that because then our straw packs get dirty way quicker. Pretty cold, but there's no ice in there, so that's good. Excuse me, mom. This side's pretty good. Water bowls and all. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at that, guys. A bit of ice in this water bowl. For some reason, it's really cold in this corner of the barn. I don't know. But this one is, is definitely pretty cold. We're just gonna tip it forward. Make sure that water's still flowing, and it is, so. At least it's still flowing, so it's not the end of the world yet, but. 
hopefully with that new adjustment, it'll stay warmer in this barn. Oh well, we're milking with Nalene this afternoon, so we're gonna go and help her out now. Oh man, this sucks. Look at all the ice here. That's still pretty grippy. Wow, that is crazy. And the return alleys for the cows, that's not good. Yes, they're slipping a little bit here. I'm gonna grab some sand and throw it on that ice. Okay, so we're all done milking here. And uh, at the beginning of milking, it was like minus 20 degrees outside. Now it's minus 25. So it's dropping pretty quickly. I think it's gonna get down to minus 30 tonight without the wind. So it's gonna get cold. And you guys can see I have the inlets set where they should be all the way shut. But if you look at the light there, you can still see there's air flowing in through the barn. And it's because these freaking inlets are still like an inch open, even though that in that little control box, I have them set to zero. It's just a little adjustment, it's a little tweaking there. So I'm just gonna grab a ladder. I'm starting to get a little bit stressed out. I think it's gonna be frozen in here tomorrow morning again, even worse than it was this afternoon if we don't do anything about these inlets. I need to just adjust them. Some are closed all the way and some are still like an inch open and that's no good. So I'm gonna grab a ladder and uh, start trying to adjust these things. I uh, grabbed a step ladder. We're up here at the inlet now. And you can see this is 100% closed and I can still push it quite a bit more closed. And there is ice, ice, ice cold air coming through there. So there's little adjustments here. Really easy to adjust. You just gotta twist it loose, pull it tight, and then uh, you're golden. This ladder was like the perfect height to work on the inlets way up there, but this ramp is slanted down. The further I go back down into this barn, the more reach I need. So this one's probably the last one I can do. That's already gonna be pretty sketch. Let's see how it goes. So this is the gap that's in there. When they're 100% closed, that's way too much. We can close it all the way up and that's gonna stop the cold air from coming into the barn here. Now what I'm afraid of is that cold air mixing with the more humid air of the barn and them just freezing shut like this. Uh, we'll just have to pull them open. It's not a big a deal as uh, everything freezing in this barn. Figured I'd come and check the Juno out. It's doing a perfect job again. And I uh, just wanted to check the ventilation in this barn. So all of these are still open a solid inch. You can see the cold air dumping into this barn, but there's so many cows in here, it's not gonna get cold anyway. So, yeah, this barn should be perfectly fine. 